Ee, biliyorsunuz 2015 yılında ben e, Amerika'ya gittim. Türk Tak Kursu vasıtasıyla doktora sonrası araştırma kursu. E, bir sene boyunca e, Profesör Doktor Raj Bitre'yle çalışmalarımız oldu. Gerçekten de çok faydalı olduğuna inanıyorum. E, uluslararası dergilerde makaleler e, yayınladık. E, ve çalışmalarımıza halen devam etmekte. Bu vesileyle zaten e, bu çalışmalarımızın neticesinde böyle bir programı uygun gördük. Bu programda Türk Tak 22-21 bilim insanı destekleme e, programı kapsamında destekleniyor. Amacımız tabii işbirliklerini daha da geliştirmek, daha da ileriye ortak çalışmalar götürmek. E, ben kısaca size e, tabii aramızda Profesör Doktor Levent Sevgi Hocam da var. E, o da kendisi e, hocam da bahsetti. E, gerçekten elektromayet alanında Türkiye'de en önde gösterilen isimlerden bir tanesi. Ben size şimdi kısaca e, Raj Bitra Hoca'nın e, kısa, çok kısa bir CV'sini e, bahsedeceğim. Aslında sayfalara sığmıyor, sayfalar dolusu e, CV'si var. Fakat çok kısa bir şekilde, özet bir şekilde size bahsedeceğim. Doktorası 1957 yılında, e, yaklaşık 60 sene önce Kanada'nın Toronto Üniversitesi'nde e, alıyor. Daha sonra Amerika Birleşik Devletleri Illinois Üniversitesi'nde uzun müddet çalıştıktan sonra Penn State Üniversitesi'nde oradan da uzun müddet çalıştıktan sonra en son olarak da 2014 yılında Central Florida Üniversitesi'ne geçiyor. Ee, aynı zamanda dünyanın başka üniversitelerinde en çok atıf alan üniversite, hocalara verdikleri ünlü alanlar başka görevler de var. Mesela Suudi Arabistan Üniversitesi'nin Kral Papulaj Üniversitesi'nde böyle bir görev var. Ee, Bin üzerinde çalışması var, makalesi var, yayınlanan makalesi var. Ee, ve bunun yanında e, kitaplar da var, I3B'yi ee, Uluslararası Elektrik Mühendisleri Enstitüsü'nün kendisi vermiş olduğu madalyaları, ödülleri var. Ee, çalışmalar genellikle elektromanyet sistemleri, e, tasarımları, radarlar, uygu antenleri, iletişim sistemleri, mikrodalga gibi e, alanları kapsamakta. Halen de çalışmaları uluslararası e, dergilerde yayınlanmakta. Even though it was in Turkish, and also the president's speech, thanks to my interpreter, she's sitting there. She's translated every word, and she's from New Jersey, so I was able to follow everything was said. Anyway, it's a great honor for me to be here. Although this is not my first visit to Turkey, it's probably the tenth one, but certainly the first time in this region and yesterday I had a very nice sightseeing tour, some historical places and so on. But the main reason I came here of course is to collaborate with uh, Professor Lucy, who was a visiting professor in my group back in the US both at the Pennsylvania State University and the University of Central Florida in Orlando. So he asked me to come here and uh, give a talk. And it was something that I wondered what would be the appropriate topic since the students probably have diverse background here. So I chose the topic of uh, communication. And of course, uh, EM stands for electromagnetic communication. I heard the president also mention that. So EM communication comes in many flavors. So I'm going to give you a glimpse of several different types of communication, starting first with uh, deep space communication and then coming down to Earth. But before I do that, let me uh, show you this slide, which was prepared by one of my former students. And he tracked down the family trade. This is my former student, who is now a dean and a uh, Professor at City University of Hong Kong. I was his advisor, and he went down to this and found that uh, Gauss, the Gauss's law, Gauss, and Helmholtz, Helmholtz equation, these 
people were in the family tree. So this is, I thought it was kind of amusing to sh show that. And now, Peggy 16. let me show you this. I think you all recognize. So, it's video game.
one to three hertz. So we're talking about very low frequency and very low level of signal that we need to detect and, and then see how the brain waves could be used to control uh, not only for, for playing games, but actually driving cars or, or, or uh, say, wheelchairs. So I'm going to just uh, can I read this. Uh, this is, again, a chart of, of uh, different brain waves. And uh, this shows how uh, different kind of probes are used. And you, you all have cell phones that you use, and people always talk about uh, what happens to inside of your brain when you use cell phones. And then uh, this is not a very high level engineering solution, but somebody thought that if you put the aluminum foil, maybe you could, you could uh, shield those those uh, kind of things. Well, into Germany. The radio antennas of these antenna fields are all linked 
constructing this telescope. Low farm will detect types of signals that have not yet been researched in the systematic manner. This means that we will presumably make completely new discoveries. We have now returned close to the moment of the universe coming into being. Images never seen before. Low far enables us to see them. And perhaps we will then be able to answer questions like, how did the universe come into being? How are stars and planets being formed? And how was hydrogen formed in the universe billions of years in the past?
this is a, another, I'm just going to show you a little bit of this. In a remote and inhospitable uh, desert. The one I showed you earlier was the Netherlands. And this one is Australia. Australia and South Africa are the two countries. A masterpiece of scientific are going to be the leaders building the square kilometer array. The project is budgeted for 20 billion US dollars. It has all these different types of loss. Go to next. This this is a the location they have chosen Western Australia like like this and not in, uh, near Sydney where most of the population lives in the East Coast. And the reason for that is that uh, this is what's called radio wire area. Again, you cannot read, so I'm going to read it for you. We're now leaving, it says, the Murchison Radio Astronomy Observatory. Thank you for being <coughs> radio quiet. So the signal level that they can detect at this location is much better or improved than they could in an urban location near a city like Sydney. And the reason for that is because the noise level from the background is much lower. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, it says you're now leaving the you're being quiet. And these are some details I'm going to go through very quickly. Uh, what they do is uh, collect the signals from different antennas, and they have a way to form the beam and to scan the beam without mechanically rotating the antenna by using signal processing technique. And what's interesting is uh, that the same star, same nebula, same thing, uh, this is the Crab Nebula, it said radio frequency looks like this, infrared looks like that, ultraviolet looks like that, and X-ray looks like that. So they send all different sensors at different frequencies to try and better understand the constituents of, of different stars. So these are the, uh, in the Netherlands, so this is the Hubble Space, Space Telescope, very large base array in the USA, and the low frequency uh, in Europe that you already saw, signal processing, and this is uh, with one of the stars, Virgo A, and uh, different kinds of antennas being used for this purpose. And so I'm just going to flip through this very quickly. The important thing is that if you did not do the signal processing, the image would look like that. By using signal processing, you can improve it like this. So this is a, a relatively new area where signal processing is being combined with electromagnetics to improve the quality of the, uh, and the resolution of the, of the image. So let me skip through this and uh, go to something that uh, I want to show you. Uh, that, uh, a project that is being carried out at Penn State University by the students. These are all undergraduate students. And what they do, and, and they're not all engineering students either. So they actually build the rocket NASA launches for them. So this is a real honest to goodness project so sponsored by NASA. And so NASA takes the, the rocket and, and launches it. Uh, it's a very exciting project for the students. Even though they're undergraduate, and as I said, they're not all engineering students. All interested in rocket science, so that's why they participate in this project. And this, this is not a game; it's actually a real, honest to goodness rocket.
Thank you very much for your attention.